Hello and welcome to Decoding the New Economy. Today I'm joined by Mikhail Svan, the founder and founder and CEO of Zendesk. Uh, Mikhail, thank you very much for joining us. No, thanks for having me. Now, uh, first of all, let's kick off with who are Zendesk and what do you do? So, uh, Zendesk, we are a seven-year-old company. We are a software company. We provide a cloud-based customer service solution. Um, we're doing that to more than 40,000 businesses around the world today. So, better, basically, we help customers better support and uh, service their customers and, um, and ultimately build a better relationship with their customers. Right. So, seven years and you were founded in Denmark and yep, exactly. uh, moved to Silicon Valley. That's a big story in itself. <laughs> yeah. So we built it out of a small loft in Copenhagen, and uh, in many ways, it's the story of you know a garage startup. In many ways, bootstrap for the first couple of years, and then saw opportunity to move to Silicon Valley, and that is where we still today in San Francisco have our headquarters. Mm. But we have half our staff working outside of uh, San Francisco, and a uh, good chunk of them are working here in Australia. Right. So, what was the journey like of uh, moving a company from Europe to um, the US? <laughs> It's a, it's a big adventure, you know. It's 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 fascinating. You learn so much. It's uh, you have to change how you think. You have to start thinking a lot bigger. Yeah. Like coming from a small economy like Denmark, and then suddenly being in Silicon Valley, so you had to start thinking a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a it's a great adventure in many ways. It's also a little scary, of course, like moving your family and starting all over yeah. uh, with so many uncertainties and so on so it, it, it's it's a great experience you know and, mm. and because we've been successful I'm extremely excited about it but it yeah. was of course something that you were also very nervous about because you're basically risking everything again yeah mm. so what was the reason for moving from Denmark to the US well, I think we all, like, if you are in the tech industry, if you think about a startup or anything like that, you know, you will know that San Francisco, Silicon Valley, is the mothership. Right. That's, that's where things are happening. You have a density of startups that are just crazy. Yeah. Like, just in our block, I don't know how many startups. Just in our same building, mm -hmm. we have multiple startups. Yeah. We grew up alongside Yammer and Eventbrite, TechCrunch, Playdom, right. and a bunch of other companies. Mm -hmm. So you have a density that creates a real industry. Yeah. So like, being a startup, out of guys and says go you're an industry and it's a very different experience and something that I really hope for everybody to, to, to experience mm -hmm. also you have of course access to a lot of business development opportunities because you have a lot of other companies there yeah you have access to talent like talent that has real experience combined with real real practical uh, 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 theoretical uh, experience so it's it's a great combination of many things and then of course you have access to capital which is not hard right and that access to capital uh, you listed earlier this year um, quite successfully how was that um, how was that process how did you find that yeah, so we listed on the New York Stock Exchange change back in May, and, and that was, of course, uh, it, the day in itself was a fantastic experience. <laughs> Very busy, but also a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, but it's a journey that we've been, uh, that we started a few years ago, uh, and it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work, and it, it can be a big distraction for the company. Yeah. But we felt it was very natural for us to do. We felt that it was in our destiny to do. We felt that if we wanted to build a next generation startup co uh, software company that defined a new industry and defined a new way for companies ultimately to engage with their customers, mm -hmm. uh, we wanted, we needed to be a, a public company. It was a part of our yeah. part of our journey to come there. Um, so it has been, it, it was a very natural thing for us to do, and it's been a great process also in terms of maturing the company, mm -hmm. having us think better about who we are and what we what we want to do. Yeah. Um, but it is a lot of work, and it can be a distraction. Yeah, that's um, an interesting point you raised there, because when you talk to quite a few companies that are listed, some of them have the attitude that it becomes too much of a management hassle uh, and answering to shareholders. Um, how have you found that? So um, it, it, you need the timing of going public has to be right. You have yeah. to be ready as a company. Mm -hmm. You have to be in the in, have a routine of quarterly reporting. You have yeah. to be in a routine of having good predictability, having good controls in your organization, being able to reiterate and, and rebudget and so on. And and you have to have all these different 
parts of your business working already. If you yeah. don't do that, and I have to get all of that stuff ready just for the IPO, it becomes a humongous challenge and it can sure. change the life of the company. But um, but if you have these things ready, it's a very natural thing to uh, take that extra step and just become a public company, basically. Yeah. So since you've listed, um, have you found uh, business? Is that uh, added to um, the business proposition? I think that uh, I think that uh, we we're very excited about being a public company. Yeah. The, I think the the market received us well and has been treating us well. We we have some good investors. They believe in the long term vision. Yeah. Um, and we focus very much on our ability to deliver for a market that is changing rapidly. And right. We feel very good about that. Now you've got a market that's changing rapidly, as you say. Where do you see the uh, services market, um, the uh, customer support market? Going. But that's really interesting because there's so many different things happening. Mm -hmm. We started out as a small company with three guys in the room sure. and we just wanted to build a better product. Yeah. Something happened over the last five, ten years where customer service is something that companies take a lot more seriously. Mm -hmm. The voice of the customer has never been louder. The yeah. Consumers were much more informed. Today. Mm -hmm. So it's a much more eye to eye level conversation between a company and its customers today. Yeah. And that uh, that changes the dynamics. Mm -hmm. That makes the company needs to take these things more seriously. It's customer service is no longer something that happens in a vacuum. It's a yeah. very public experience. Mm -hmm. and we as consumers we have a voice that reaches a lot of people. Yeah. If you're unhappy with the product, unhappy with the service. Mm -hmm. So that has changed the that has changed the playing field dramatically. Yeah. But at the same time, more and more organizations are also realizing that if they can give their customers a great experience mm -hmm. through of course a great product, through great service, yeah. they can turn their customers into the biggest evangelists, mm -hmm. into almost an extension of their sales and marketing tools. Yeah. And that is something that a lot of companies are realizing is the most efficient way of acquiring new business and new customers. So where customer service used to be something that was almost a cost center, you yeah. have on the side. Nowadays, it's become much more central. It's almost become a revenue center and much more central to companies' operations. Yeah. Well, last time I met you, you said that um, back in the old days, the customer service guys never got the girls. But, uh, that's changed. Didn't pick up any girls in the help desk. <laughs> right, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> so you see all of that changing as companies see it much more what being focused now? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and, and there's so many things happening also, what we can do with the cloud and what we can do with technology today mm -hmm. that makes customer service much smarter. Yeah. And, and enables organizations to pinpoint all these little events that can lead to a bad experience and almost yeah. preventing them or dropping down on the max exact time when they happen and turning that potential bad situation into a great experience. Right. So we see more and more customers going from traditional reactive customer service to much more proactive customer mm -hmm. care. Yeah. And that is uh, that is changing the picture dramatically. Mm -hmm. How do you see that evolving? Um, when I talk to um, other people in the industry, say it's Salesforce, Gini, that sort of thing, there's lots of talk about the Internet of Machines now. Do you see that quite going to end us? That, hey, your turbine on your truck's going to <laughs> die, so that's going to affect your customer service? Well, I think that, that, um, that customer service is something that happens in context of other things. Right. So, and, and with the internet and with technology, we know so much about how our customers are using our tools and services. Mm -hmm. And of course, you want to use all of that data to give a great experience. Yeah. And we all know that, we, all have, we have all tried that calling a call center or contacting an organization and then having to explain them all over what we're actually doing. Mm -hmm. Even though we are their customer and they have all our data and they should know these things. Yeah. So I think that with, with the Internet of Things and all these different things, like really leveraging data yeah. to provide a much better customer experience is a very natural development and, and something mm -hmm. that we should all do and be doing. Yeah, so connecting all those data points. Exactly. Yeah. So with that, um, and sticking on the cloud side of things there, so how are you finding uh, integration with things like social media and so on working for you? Well, I think that I think that it's it's uh, the, the, the traditional notion of customer service is not much something where uh, I told you how you could contact my company. Okay, right. It could happen between nine and five, and it could happen on this number, and that was basically it. And then you waited in uh, on hold for twenty minutes after sure. you came through the the IVR, and, and that was basically how customer service was provided. Yeah. Customer service today is because our customers, consumers, are so much more well informed. Mm. 
and they don't expect customer service to be a place they have to go to. Yeah, customer service is something that has to exist within the product, within the within the experience, within the website, in context of what's going on. Yeah. And it's up to the consumer to reach out on the media that works for the consumer, mm. and it's up to the it's up to the organizations to embrace those channels and make sure they filter those and things that they can they can respond to it. So I think it's much more on the consumers to decide which channels they want to uh, communicate on, and I, we can see that. For, I can see that for my kids and my nephews and nieces. Yeah, they're not using like email and phone and all these different mm. things. They use all these new tools for texting and communicating. Facebook, all these social media for communicating, and that's how they want to communicate with organizations too. Yeah. So, so just to conclude, Miguel, it's big growth there. You've gone from uh, three people uh, founding the company to what was it, 400 now? Uh, 600 by the end of the last quarter. Right, 600 people over seven years. That's a great story there. What's your advice for somebody starting out with a three-person business and a good idea? <laughs> well, so. Um, we, we were not very professional in our approach to building a startup initially. Like we didn't have like a business plan. We were not very good at thinking about the total addressable market or any of these things. But we we cared a lot about the product we built. Yeah. And we we believed heavily that we could build a new generation product. Mm. And I think if you if you care and are passionate about what you're building and care about the customers and of course are good at executing all these different things. You know, you, you will one way or the other succeed. Right. So I think it's about if you invest your heart in it and you really work hard for something, you will always succeed in some way, one yeah. way or the other. Right. And on that, uh, thank you very much for joining Decoding the New Economy. Thank you. And thank you for joining us as well.